You're still watching Daybreak on Arise News. Time for the press preview. A first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. Let's take a look at this day. Shetima will be equitable, just, inclusive if elected. Uh, some riders there. Eta says it will be disastrous if Tinubu loses presidential poll. Also says Peter Obi will get southeast, south, south votes. And accuses Ken of being PDP religious wing. Our leading photo there this morning, the memorial service of Emmanuel Abiodu, the father of uh, Ogun State's governor, right there. And just above that, crude oil theft hurting Nigeria's economy. Shell laments. And Buhari says, no single nation can solve security challenges alone. And above the nameplate of this day this morning, governors write federal government over alleged $481 million Paris funds debt, says renewed deduction plan unlawful. And the last headline here, Naira, Naira gains momentum, appreciates to 660 to the dollar in parallel market. The Punch newspaper is leading with terror attack. NRC suspends Lagos Kano at Jokuta train services. And Oshua PC members protest demand chairman sacking. 21 killed in Lagos. Cross River crashes. And uh, the Federal Road Safety Commission is blaming FUG for those licenses, for the, for the accident's impeachment. Professor, Professor Shoinka backs lawmakers against President Buhari. Kerosene hits 800 naira per litre. Nigerians face hard times. Right, let's look at the nation newspaper. Uh, Lagos Colonel Top Registry. Lagos, Co Lagos Colonel Top uh, Registration. Ekiti, Bayasa, Yobe, uh, Gombe have least voters. INEC begins cleanup of voters' register. Bullet from terrorist guns to the my stomach. That's uh, five train attack hostages freed. And that picture you're looking at is Nigeria again on the medal table. She won gold in weightlifting strike. Federal government withholding our salaries since February says ASU. And then if you look at the top, Mass Buhari assures states facing terror attacks of support flat to hit 233 council areas in 32 states. That is NEMA's warning to states. On the Daily Sun this morning, its leading story on the front page, fight against terrorism. Buhari gives military full powers, seeks foreign help as policemen flood Abuja. The photo just below that five newly freed abuja kaduna train abductees with a facilitator of their release who's in the middle in kaduna yesterday just below that strike no justification for keeping students at home for five months that's from the sgf and one more headline here just beside it uh name daily sun gunmen kill seven security guards injure two others in emo state the international papers now daily mail uh, well the papers backing listress they're saying she has the boldness vision and strength of conviction to build on what boris began that's why the mail is backing listress for leader now, China's chilling threat over U.S. trip to Taiwan. Beijing vows targeted military action after extremely dangerous visit by Speaker Pelosi. All right, let's look at Financial Times. Pelosi's arrival in Taiwan sparks extensive Chinese military de drills. Exercises around Ireland. U.S. plane takes indirect route. Independence forces warned. Those are the riders there. Then in the middle of the paper, Oba's positive cash flow arrives at last. But taxi groups still post $2.6 billion loss. One more international paper. Guardian UK, leading story. Outrageous oil firms rake in huge profits while bills are saw. And just below that, Pelosi lands in Taiwan. U.S. speakers 
speaker's visit leaves China furious and truce feels heat after you turn over nine billion pound in cuts. And for the press preview, I think we have Emmanuel Bello who joins us from our outside studio. Emmanuel, good morning. Thanks for joining us. This morning, this day is leading with a story about the vice presidential candidate of the ruling All Progressives uh, Congress, Shetima. He says, will be equitable, just, and inclusive if elected. What do you make of this statement, given that there's been a lot of chatter around how non-inclusive the ticket he's running on is? Uh, well, in Keti, yes, you're, uh, good morning. You're right. That's, uh, uh, that's uh, one of the things he needs to uh, be, we'll be confronted with. So uh, the more he says this thing, uh, people just look at his own emergency, his, his ticket as an, um, you know, as an anticlimax to, uh, to an opposite to what he's saying. He's saying he's going to be inclusive, he's going to be equitable. Uh, but the charge is that APC hasn't done that. Uh, and the, the agitators are saying that, look, the very essence of his coming, uh, his, he, the, the fact that uh, it wasn't a Christian uh, that was picked to, to balance the ticket. Remember that all the other parties were balancing their ticket. It's either a Christian Muslim ticket or a Muslim, um, a Muslim Christian ticket. So um, his coming, you know, is rather going to be overshadowing these beautiful things he's saying. And he's got quite a lot of uh, nice things to say about himself. Some people have even said really great things about Shetima in fairness to him, his record in government, uh, his relationship to, with Christians even when he was governor and all of that. So th those, those things have been said about him. Uh, but the, the mention of Shetima just sadly, uh, or uh, for him, uh, just brings, brings up the issue in Keti that you've raised, uh, the issue of his own emergence. Uh, uh, that uh, that ticket was in balance, and uh, you would think that the, the matter would just go away, but it's, it's not. Uh, the, thanks to people like Yakubu Dogara and um, and Babachi, who keeps bringing it to the front burner uh, in meetings after meetings. Uh, 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 the other day, it was even a full-fledged summit uh, that was that, that was held in, uh, in, uh, in you know in, in saying that uh, it's wrong for the party to have um, actually done the uh, Muslim Muslim ticket. So Shetima is there trying to give a good. You know, trying to reach out, trying to uh, showcase himself as the, you know, as again, even the people that brought him say that uh, uh, Tinubu say that it's because of his competence, and there's all of that to talk uh, to speak of for him. But uh, whether you like it or not, the the, the image or the imagery uh, uh, seems to be that of you know the fact that that ticket was in balance. In this story, too, in the this day story, uh, 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 I was speaking and he said, look, uh, Khan is the is the is the religious arm of the of the PDP, and that uh, Khan has, has continuously put this on the front burner, especially the issue of the Muslim Muslim ticket, and that it's PDP uh, that Khan has been working for, and Khan has been very clear about it. They feel that APC excluded the Christian APC um, is very clear about not wanting Christian votes. The APC keeps saying that look, we are dealing with numbers. Uh, we're we're looking at uh, the key the key voting strengths of uh, of our demography and the places where we want to get the, because it's about at the end of the day it's about how you're able to get those votes uh, but they they, they can is saying that look beyond votes and some other people beyond can is saying that look uh, apart from votes you needed to have actually uh, worried about our diversity um, the fact that uh, this is who uh, we are uh, we're a nation basically uh, you know built on these two major religions so you should have actually t um, taken that into cognizance but uh, the argument remains that look we want to win elections uh, we don't want to win uh, you know what is popular we don't want to win what is politically correct if necessary we just want to we want to win elections so people feel that the apc has put power over and above any kind of consideration. Shetima is carrying that burden with him everywhere he goes to. And yes, in the church yesterday, he was very clear about the fact that he himself is a candidate for change, is a candidate, he represents equity, he represents what is just, he represents all of that. Uh, some people say that if you look at his record, he's not, he's not lying. Uh, but there are people too that will say that, sadly, it is his emergence as the running mate of this party uh, that a lot of people will be, you know, will be, uh, watching and that's the benchmark uh, with which people we actually rating. Emmanuel, let's take a look at the Sun, uh, the Daily Sun. Uh, fight against terrorism. Uh, Buhari gives military full powers, seeks foreign help. Um, I, I'm bothered about this phrase, full, full power. powers. 
Um, what was the military operating on before this time? <laughs> Half of the powers or a quarter of it? I'm loving Kenneth because just, just before we came on air, I was actually asking that, uh, Louis the same thing. I was like, uh, what was, when I saw the, the story, I was like, oh, food power, what's, what's food power here? And you know, Kenneth, uh, yes, to your point, and it's almost a recurring thing. You know, you're almost like a broken record now. Um, you see a situation, this is the only place where you have those kind of stories, uh, where the, you, say, you, you, you see a headline like uh, a military ordered to do what they are supposed to do. The, the president gives his go ahead. Uh, the president has come. And you begin to wonder, well, do they really need, I don't know how, it, how the military operates. Maybe somebody needs to educate me. Uh, do they really need those kind of, because I mean, they, I think from day one, uh, the rules of engagement or their engagements already spelled out for them. They're just supposed to do what is right. Do they have to wait? Wait until some full pass are given to them. Do they have to wait until some kind of orders are given to them? Why not just go ahead and do what you know uh, you, 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 you're called to do and do the right thing? Do you need some orders to do that? But then uh, the president is the commander in chief, and probably they will be needing his uh, uh, his uh, his um, his command or his uh, support uh, to do some of this thing. Maybe that is how we, we are not military strategists here to understand that. But the rest of us, you and I, Kenneth, and the rest of us looking at this story, we wonder what full pass is all about. Uh, what have they been operating under? Uh, probably it is it, 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 it's a military it's a military strategy term, or maybe something that concerns just the military. But whatever it is, a lot of people expect that look. Uh, and we really, really applaud you know our men in uniform for the courage, uh, for the uh, you know for the bravery and some of the things that we hear them doing. I mean, they have to do that for us to be safe and all of that. But like you're saying, Kenneth, everybody expects more, expects more, of, especially the jest that we, uh, you're hearing about. They expect more from um, uh, the security uh, forces to do the right thing and, and, and keep us all safe. All right, well, uh, let's look at uh, the nation. It says a uh, Lagos Kano uh, topping registration. Incidentally, it's not the East, Ekiti. Bielsa, Yobe, and Gombe states have least voters. And it begins cleanup of voters' register. Just look at that story. What do you make of it? Well, indeed, you know, yesterday we spoke about it briefly and we looked at those numbers. We said, look, whether we like it or not, again, this election is going to be about um, how the parties are able to take advantage of these numbers. And look at them. What the nation is doing today is building on yesterday's story. Um, yesterday we say it was the northeast and the southwest, uh, but the nation's story is bringing out in bold relief. It's putting figures on states now, and we're seeing states that are least in the registration. We're also seeing other demography, like uh, we have more uh, uh, more uh, uh, female, uh, uh, yes, female uh, uh, registrations, and the youth too did a very good one this time around in, in voting. Uh, the paper was able to also break it down to even the age. Uh, demographies uh, uh, of, of people who are who went for the registration, but uh, yes, I, the, the nation is maybe 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 happy with this kind of story. We're saying Lagos and Kano, uh, so that suggests the huge uh, votes that are available in these states and. Uh, how the parties are going to actually fare. Uh, some people reading into these figures, reading into these numbers, are also looking at the direction, probably, that the election will be going in 2023. Uh, the only difference is that, well, it's no longer business as usual. It doesn't, it doesn't mean just because Kano uh, has uh, that chunk of number, one party has the powers to be able to you know, Ghana, those kind of numbers. So even in Lagos, uh, it's a different era altogether. It's the Beavers era. It is the era of the voters and not just the numbers. So it is about, yeah, the numbers are important, but it's about those who are able to take advantage of the numbers. And with this, um, with the kind of uh, demographics and with the kind of people that you, you see going for the registration, uh, it's also almost difficult too to predict uh, what uh, uh, what will happen. In the past, you will have said that look, whoever controls Lagos or Kano will control the chunk of the votes. Uh, but it's beyond that now. Yeah, things. It, 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 some people even say that it is the voters' revolution. And if you look at the way people, young people, uh, went into picking those uh, registry, uh, registering and ready to participate in the process, you will know that it's very difficult to think that okay, uh, uh, one party or this other party uh, that has always, you know, uh, the pattern that we've seen in the past is going to repeat itself. Uh, there might be an upset, uh, but interestingly, uh, this will help the parties to actually decide where to go uh, to campaign the most for the most votes. Um, we also saw states that, you know, have the least numbers in, in, that, in that regard. So uh, I'm sure a lot of, you know, parties and, uh, you know, political analysts will be looking at these numbers uh, to be able to figure out 
uh, who is gaining, who is going to gain what, who is going to get the chunk of the numbers. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's what this election is going to boil down to. Um, those were the highest numbers uh, to be declared uh, president or uh, to go into other offices. So yes, the numbers are very important, uh, but you will have to also look at the voting, what is changing in the voting character of our people and what is changing in the polity generally as regards elections, as regards the kind of changes people want to see happen. So yes, the numbers are there, uh, but reading them is a different thing altogether. And taking advantage of them is actually the job that uh, the parties will have to uh, be confronted with going forward. Emmanuel, on the international scene, something is happening. Let's take a look at the Daily Mail. China's chilling threat over U.S. trip to Taiwan. Beijing vows targeted military action after extremely dangerous visit, what they call extremely dangerous visit, by the Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Her trip to Asia has caused so much tension. We didn't know she was going to go to Taiwan. Finally, she's landed in Taiwan, and China is not happy china seems to th their view on taiwan is that it's currently part of its territory meanwhile the u.s treats taiwan as an independent country how do you see nancy pelosi's trip does it provide a sort of excuse for china to sort of ramp up its uh operation around taiwan in an event that one day they might be a hostile takeover. What do you think? Uh, well, certainly the history of those relationships uh, has, has always shown a, you know, the tendency toward those takeover the engagement that you're talking about. And now with the US uh, coming into the equation is, of course, uh, certainly you know, going to up uh, the kind of actions and the kind of, or rather inactions that are going on uh, in those cycles. So it's an interesting development and yes, the visit was bold and of course the, you know, the China's reaction of course was almost predictable and now for those who, you know, those are the rest of us watching developments, especially, uh, you know, looking at what Russia did with Ukraine and looking at the relationship between even Russia and China, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is bound to, to increase uh, those concerns and those fears about uh, the kind of uh, takeover uh, you, you spoke about. In Keji, I don't know why you skipped the other aspect of the story with trust in the Daily Mail and the support she's getting from that paper. I, 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 okay, Indy is the only trust fund here. I think Kenneth too is a trust. Is a trust. Is a trust fund. I don't. I don't know. I don't know whether it's Sunako or where he's leaning. But certainly, in Keji, you, you are excited yeah. about trust uh, endorsement. She's getting a lot of support now, and uh, we're getting. It's getting closer to uh, a, a prediction uh, that will come through that uh, she probably, she's probably going to to actually be uh, the next uh, uh, Prime Minister. Not too sure, I'm not calling it yet, the network is not calling it, but uh, she's getting a lot of endorsement, close to 60% now endorsement uh, she's getting uh, to be the next PM. Uh, you didn't ask that in Kecha, I thought I should just put it in.